Hello everyone, welcome to Sunny SoCal. Um, we're going to talk about anterior chain gait and posterior chain gait today. Okay, and, and why it's important and what I mean by this. So anterior chain kind of means if I had to do a setup, you know, your head goes forward, your heels go forward, like I'm that would be my anterior chain. And posterior chain would be I'm gonna arch and extend. Okay, because of modern lifestyle, head forward, driving, typing, texting, cycling. A lot of what we do is, is forward, forward, forward. A lot of people are, have this incredible front chain bias. Um, try and seek to understand what I'm saying. To try not to dismiss and say, oh, anterior, posterior chain is not a thing, blah, blah, blah. There's no bias between the movements. Try and seek to understand what I'm saying. Because what you want to do is you want to experience the duality of both. Most people are trapped in a movement pattern, don't realize they're trapped in a movement pattern, and then don't have options. And this is to expand your optionality. Okay, it's very good for your posture, it's very good for your mindset, it's very good for your emotional set, it's very, very healing, it's very good for your nervous system. I personally believe that if you um, exercise and train too strong on an anterior chain, I think it's very bad for your nervous system. But I mean, that's like way off the scope of, of what you need to know. <laughs> um, but don't have a strong opinion or don't be dismissive if you can't. Okay, so we go back to contralateral and homolateral gait. Remember, Nine out of ten people, if they take a step or step away, like a grizzly bear, right? Homolateral means same side. So, um, and that's how we work as babies. We activate one side and then we activate the other side. And then when we start to crawl, we start to learn this crossover gait, which is contralateral movement. Okay. So contralateral movement, when I walk, as I step, my belly button and my torso go towards the lead leg. Nine out of ten. So this is including you. So you want to stand up at this stage and try it. We'll step like this and then try and fix it okay and this can be viewed as a couple of ways this can be viewed as a timing problem it can be as a coordination problem but basically you don't want to be stuck in this in this homolateral gate trying to fix it and if you front chain biased and i'll show you examples of the two you're going to probably end up with homolateral gate because you almost like end up grabbing for stability and it locks your hips okay um, so we're going to do a little test is if you if you, I'm going to step forward with this leg, so I'm going to turn first and then step. Okay. Um, let me just get a bit more space. So what I've done is, and you can try this too. Um, first, do the turn and step test, <laughs> and you probably find you turn and step the wrong way. Okay. So you're going to turn. The belly button's going to go towards your lead leg. So turn and step towards your lead leg. If I squeeze this glute, I increase my my amount my rotation that i go towards this lead leg can you feel that so i engage or squeeze this glute i rotate more so if i take a turn step squeeze this glute that's what happens okay and and that's as it should be so as you're stepping and your glutes basically fire and i don't want to get too involved in this glute max the big muscle is your big hip extensor but there is a gentle element you're not supposed to walk and squeeze your butt <laughs> But there is a gentle element of this big hand as it pushes you will rotate you towards this leg and it will rotate you towards this leg and it's a very important thing it's timing so your knee <coughs> needs to be behind your hip and then those muscles will gently push you into this bias okay so if if we're on anterior chain so what happens is if i put my my foot out like in front of me and i'm on my forefoot you can't really see it in here so if I put my foot forward and I'm on my forefoot, so I'm weighing on my forefoot, my plantar fascia tightens up, my calves tighten up, but more importantly, my deep posterior compartment tightens up, which is post-tip. My adductors and hamstrings tighten up, and my glute kind of switches off. And what happens is if we, if we front chain bias, so if I'm on my front chain more than I am in extension, what happens is that starts to shut this contralateral gate down. It seems to. Okay, some people are front chain and do seem to get it right, but it seems to. Okay, and anyway, in this, if I'm walking, let's say I walk with the head forward and I walk on my forefoot, what will happen is this just gets tighter and tighter, your spine gets tighter, you start to get very, very compressed. And it's, why is this relevant? Well, a lot of running cues are um, engage the core, tighten the core, a lot of drills, all the skips are all in front and front and front. So you get this incredible forward bias. You'll even see people instructing running and doing reactive drills and you'll see their head slam forward every time they pick their knee up 
So at Inarana, we want soft hips when we walk, we float our knee forward, we, we don't feed into this reactive grabbing or tension of your deep anterior chain. It's bad for you. I firmly believe it really, really messes with your nervous system and causes all sorts of problems that you don't want to go, but that's a rabbit hole not for this discussion. This discussion is just simply anterior chain, posterior chain, can you do both? Can you swap between the two so that you can actually make an informed decision? Okay, so what does posterior chain walking look like? Well, posterior chain walking is your, um, this oblique sling, this shoulder blade to this glute kind of works. So it's kind of like when we do the penguins. Okay, so what I want to do is I'm going to turn and step towards this, but I'm going to have a sense that I'm getting pushed forward from behind. And I'm pushed forward. So posterior chain walking will look like this. Like there's my posterior chain, like I really got my sway on. That's exaggerated. I'm kind of leaning back, but you want a sensation that your back is pushing you forward. And anterior chain walking would be sort of stepping on the front, head forward, feet forward, head forward. It's very, very common for people that are teaching people how to run, and they'll say, Oh, you're a um, if my head's forward, my heels will tend to go forward, and they'll say you're a heel striker which is correct, but what you're actually doing is, is your ankle is coming past your knee, which it should never do. But this is a sign that you're very anterior chain dominant and that you're caught out of um, position and posture. It's, and the heel striking is just a symptom of that. What you can't do is if someone's anterior chain dominant and heel striking excessively, what you can't then do, now I've got to show my feet, what you can't then do is tell that person to become a four foot walker because then they, now you're really going to screw them up. Or you were, you know, excessive heel runner, and then you need to run on your fourth. That will, as soon as you have that sort of sense of out of position or posture problem, and you try and fix it with a forefoot, um, you're going to get into real, real trouble. Okay, and that's like shin splints and needle shin splints is a huge component of this. Literally, if you swap people onto their posterior chain more, like severe shin splints that people can't run from, medial tibial stress. Will disappear in 24 or 48 hours. Uh, you might get another injury, it's such a dramatic change, or you, you know, you can highlight different areas of your body, so be careful. But it is okay, so that's uh, like a point. Is it? Is, I hope we're all clear on this, right? So, um, posterior chain, you know, your head needs to, you need to have a really good posture. Head needs to sit on top of shoulders, shoulders on top of hips. Okay, if I think about almost opening up like an angel, we can walk around in this position, and you could say, Oh, well my feet hit the ground, we call this angel, very, very differently from when I'm a zombie. And get head forward, hands forward, your heels go forward, your heels strike. And that's sort of like a difference of the difference between the anterior chain and the posterior chain. You can also think of anterior chain and posterior chain like a horse, like the front of a horse pulls <laughs> and the back of a horse extends. And we want to be, we want to be more in extension, extensioning Extension cues will open you up, create space in your movement, it's kinder to your hips, and it's very good for your nervous system. Once you find flexion cues, picking your feet up, um, working on your hip flexors, tends to have this, it works into your deep anterior core, and it can get tighter and tighter, and it compresses your spine, and it's just a rabbit hole you don't want to go down. So if you're doing a lot of flexion drills, if you know, if you like, I plank, I go strong core, I do a lot of skips, I do a lot of drills, I do a lot of ankling, a lot of foot in front of me <laughs> drills. You ride a bicycle, <laughs> you swim, your anterior chain can be so dominant. And, and um, if that's you, I strongly urge you to start thinking about your posterior chain. Can you walk and maybe run with your posterior chain? Can you, um, it's literally like, like you just don't have bandwidth. You, you, your pendulum has swung to one side and It'll feel fantastic. You'll do these kind of drills all day long because they're in your comfort zone and they feel so good because you're good at them, but you are going to be stuck here and it's a very, very injury prone, anxious, nervous uptight place to be. You want to, like, you know, your posterior chain, there's extension, you open up, your breathing's better, your nervous system calms down. It's extraordinary and it's a big performance enhancer, but if you think this can't be or you, you're I, what I don't want to do is turn it into a fight or a duality and comparing and contrasting. What I'm urging you to do is see sort of both sides of the coin, experience the duality of it, and then find your happy place in the middle. But most people are shifted this way, don't know that they're this way, trapped in this way, see everyone else doing a ton of drills that will sort of anchor you in that 
space. Um, and that's not, you, you want to be able to sort of have some range before. And pure runners often figure out how to use their posterior chain. Um, and they get very, very good, and they, the ones that don't break down and injure as much as far as I'm concerned. But what happens is if you're a triathlete or you got injured, um, and you're biking and swimming and running and all this anterior chain and then a lot of drills, it can shut the door on you so that you're locked in your anterior chain and you, you don't have access to your posterior chains. So we see it very, very commonly in, in triathletes um, when they're injured on the run, can't run for a while, swim and bike, and then when they come back, their running is a mess and it's very, very difficult to get back to where they were just from a, a posture and sort of technique phase. Okay, so this is, penguins is a great idea, or you can just literally practice, um, I'm gonna remember, turn first, then step, that'll help you a lot, <laughs> okay? But I'm going to literally feel like my glute is pushing my hip forward. Okay? So I'm, I'm gonna have a sense of my, I do nothing, I stand on a connected leg and my hip pushes me forward, I stand on a connected leg, and yes, you're gonna feel like you're arching, I'm not, arching to dump into my back and hyperextend, I'm just having a push from behind. Okay. Working on your posture, so doing, we'll do in the next video, we'll do spinal wave, um, and learning how to undulate your spine and have a proper spinal posture will help a ton. Um, jump rope in this position opens up your shoulders and opens up your body and, and teaches you this sort of athletic posture. But mostly this video is about start thinking and getting into your head, am I front chain bias or posterior chain bias can i switch between the two i think perfect running there's some sort of balance between the two and as examples uh, wade for nickirk is a 400 meter runner the greatest of all time <laughs> he is south african he runs looks like a perfect balance between the two you, can, you can't sort of figure out you know it depends what eyes you put on okay whereas michael johnson the 400 meter runner was clearly a posterior chain dominant runner and you know everyone said you run differently from everyone else and he says perhaps everyone's doing it wrong I'm in that camp. I believe we need a slight posterior chain bias. Okay, so that's posterior chain, anterior chain. Um, and it's interesting, this is conceptual. We can have people do deadlifts all day long, squats, rows, firing up their rhomboids. It does not mean it translates into their running um, and improves their running, but it, or it seems to shift it much. I think, you know, you don't need to do a ton of posterior chain exercises. You need to understand it conceptually, and it's a change in timing. So. The, the timing from this is very different from the timing from this. And a cue that pans in, we call it the one and cue. So most people run and work on their cadence, so they go one, two, three, four, right? So you're picking your legs up off the ground. This is one and. You want to land and then do nothing for an and. <laughs> so you go one and two and three. And, and you, you learn to extend on the and. So that's a great way to sort of get your posterior chain going, is go for a walk and instead of thinking, stepping like one, two, three, four, <laughs> go one and two and three. And on the and, you're gonna just travel forward on the connected leg. Please make sure that your belly button is pointing towards the lead leg. So you're going one and two and and. <laughs> okay, don't. <laughs> Do not go and, 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 okay, you will be wasting your time. But anyway, you'll, you'll start to understand that this whole concept sort of pans into each other, okay? So, standing on a connected leg, and, and that and is your posterior chain pushing you forward. And when you run, you can go one and, and you can try and generate power as it were, or shift forward on the and, not on the one. And so, then now you'll also start getting into why well, I don't like working on cadence when you run because it's a flexion cue. You pick your feet up to increase your cadence. You need to land and then extend this posterior chain and then you'll start to realize, oh, well, maybe that's why everyone's working on their cadence, on their front bias drills, and then you realize why they don't have access to a posterior chain. Okay. So there's an anterior and posterior chain. Very, very, very important. Please seek to understand. Please try. Um, I, I personally will not work, when I work with athletes, um, I want to, there should be a, almost like either no difference between anterior and posterior chain, so they're very, very neutral, or slight posterior chain bias. Um, if we're stuck in an anterior chain bias with an athlete, and, and I, I won't work with them, okay? Because it, you, you, can't, you can't treat the amount of tension they're putting into your body out of them. And I see all sorts of 
bad sort of neurological side effects. It, in, uh, this is not the post forward, but it gets into your breathing, into your tension, into your nervous system. Okay. So please try and seek to understand and just try and figure this out and go for walks or runs and go one and or think about, you can even take your hand and just sort of, sort of push myself forward, push myself forward, push myself forward. But be very, very mindful that you turning toward the lead leg and not the other way around. That's what you first got to get right. Okay, and this pairs very well with the penguin. Okay, thank you my friends. Take care. Um, I'll post a link down below. We created a communities on Kajibi, Kajibi communities, which is free to join and there we're going to discuss running and put videos of running and breaking down and examples and exercises and trying to create a running community on Kajibi. I'll put the link in the description below. You can click on that link and come find us on a running community that I'm trying to build. Okay, take care, move well, have fun. Run with your posterior chain.